Okay, so good day again. My name is JD and I will be your lecturer for the Field Study 1. This is episode 3 of the Field Study 1. So for the previous slides, we talked about previous episodes, we talked about the school environment and then we also talked about learner diversity, focusing on the developments. I presented uh, some uh, developmental theories, but again, that's not limited to the developmental theories that I only presented, but there are a lot. So... I encourage you to read more about developmental theories, uh, which is in your child and adolescent and development of learners. Okay, so let's talk about the episode three. The episode three is learner diversity, learner's focus. So as teachers, we enter classrooms that have different students, that have different attitudes, different characters, and different learning styles different environments at home so therefore we must focus on uh, we must deal with principles pertaining to the importance of giving importance to the uh, focus of these learners so first is the principles of development so for the principles of development first is the development and learning proceeds at varying rates as uneven rates across different areas of child's function. As I have mentioned in the episode two, that the rate or the development of a learner or of, of a person varies. Uh, nagbabago-bago ito. Minsan, a child who is supposed to do something at the age of nine can do it at the age of 12. And then sometimes, those students who can, you're supposed to do it at the age of nine Nagagawa na nila at the age of seven pa lang. It happens and it's normal. So do not force children or, or a learner much to what it is expected to them. Like if at their age gap, dapat ganito lang as is. Focus on that and allow the learners to grow on that field. And then development and learning are maximized when learners are challenged at that level above their current mastery. But if that learner already attained mastery of a certain skill, it is, of course, encouraged na to level it up, but not too difficult, okay? And um, there is what we call a zone of proximal development, wherein if the learners are not capable of doing it already, that's the time when teachers or parents are asked to intervene, and we call it scaffolding. Scaffolding, we try to help them up. On, on the level that is required for them. And then next is differentiated instruction is a student approach that aims to match the learning content, activities, and assessment to the different approaches, uh, different characteristics, abilities, interests, and needs of the learners. So as teachers, no, in the 21st century learning, kasi hindi na to uh, teacher-centered, uh, it is already student-centered. We want the learners, uh, we want to have a holistic learner. A learner that after he or she graduates the program from basic education or higher education, he or she or this learner already has the holistic learning in different fields. Now, it must be student approach, Okay. Uh, there are different techniques or strategies that are student approach which you sh you may consider upon your observations to different teachers that are already in service but as pre-service teachers it is encouraged for you to observe the teaching approaches of these teachers on how they promote student approach and it must still be aligned with the learning content okay and competencies that is required or mandated by the curriculum and activities must be aligned with the objectives and the assessments and evaluation must also be aligned with the objectives. It's like fishbowl. So, dapat aligned. Ang tawag natin, meron tayong tinatawag sa curriculum development na uh, curriculum mapping. So, the course offering must be appropriate the vertical and horizontal alignment of the courses or of the subjects must also be appropriate. And pagdating sa instructional plan, kung ano dapat ang learning objective, i-hit dapat yun ng activity at dapat sa assessment mo, i-hit yung objective. So, in the learner's focus, one uh, prof ed that you should have an established uh, learning is the 
curriculum development because it is necessary. Example, before you give an activity or before you start your lecture, you must first give, uh, identify the uh, learner's needs. Diba? And if you recall on your lectures on the structures of curriculum, the, there is always, whether it be uh, Ralph Tyler or Hilda Taba, lagi yang merong assessment of learner's needs because education and curriculum is the backbone of the academic institution or of the school of or also known as the backbone of learning. At pag sinabi natin curriculum, it is what we follow across. And the problem is that a, a lesson plan or an instructional plan is only aligned for a certain type of learner. But uh, we have different type of learners across the school, across the year level, and in different sections. Iba-iba yung haharapin mo mga sudyante. So, kailangan, kapag hinarap mo itong mga sudyante na to, meron kang mga handang activities to foster the learner's needs. Okay? Next, if you take a look at, look at your PPST, uh, the PPSD is Philippine Professional Standard for Teachers. They highlighted factors that bring out diversity of learners. Um, take note that the PPSD do not actually limit the teachers. The purpose of the PPSD is to increase the standards of teachers in the country. Uh, but then again, there are a lot of paperwork to deal with. No? And... Yeah, there's a lot of papers that has to be accomplished by our teachers in the basic education, which you as pre-service teachers must also be ready in facing this. Okay, so in the PPSD, they highlighted there, one is that differences in learners' gender, strength, needs, and interests, and experiences. Remember that a learner, uh, learning activity, or let's say learner, learning outcome, must be considered muna yung ito mga to, itong mga ilan na to, um, gender, strength, needs, interests, and experiences. And example, you are teaching at the provinces and you're teaching at Metro Manila and uh, based on the curriculum guide, it has same competencies na hinihingi. But how are you going to do it in the different instructions? Like here in Metro Manila or here in, uh, or in the cities, you can actually give an activity wherein the students can acquire the information online. But for students in the province, of course, it is encouraged based on the experiences and the environment that the materials that they might acquire or information that they might acquire is very limited. Could either be the radio or the um, newspapers or, uh, yeah. But the uh, the, I'm not saying that they cannot reach the internet, yes, but then again, there are also a lot of students who cannot do it. Okay, so as a teacher, no, must know how to create his or her learning plan inside the classroom, considering that if you are inside the classroom, you are facing different students who are from different cultures, especially if you are teaching in the cities. Example, Metro Manila. Metro Manila is a melting pot of cultures. So be careful sa pagtuturo natin. Right now, a lot of modules are coming out um, that are very discriminating in many aspects. So teachers, we are, we must consider the learners, okay? And also the contents of the books that we are giving. We do not want to discriminate learners inside our classroom. But because I have mentioned, what I have mentioned is that learners have different um, rates, and, uh, which is also related to the second point that I want to highlight is that learners have different lingu linguistic, cultural, socioeconomic, and religious background. So that part, as teachers, no, uh, do not play with words or accents of a certain culture. There are a lot of cases wherein the teacher would tend to tease a student based on their accents. And sometimes the students also does this to teachers. But of course, we do not want that to happen. And students have different cultures. As I have mentioned, if you are teaching in, uh, in, in a city, it's a melting pot of the cultures of a country. So be careful on what you teach and be careful on 
how you teach the content if it is a very sensitive topic and could actually um, disregard or harm the identity of a certain example uh, indigenous people's group do not uh, do not uh, say or do not discuss that anymore or discuss it in an appropriate manner Okay, and then socioeconomic needs. Remember that in lines that uh, education is the great equalizer. So it's a great equalizer. So dapat una mong titingnan as teacher, dapat maramdaman ng mga estudyante mo pag pumasok siya ng classroom, whether mayaman siya o mahirap, hindi yun yung basis ng karunungan nila. So yes, of course, rich people or well-off people have high advantage when it comes to opportunities and learning because of the uh, support that they are having rather than the students who, are, who came from a, a not that uh, well-off family or poor family. Uh, but then again, when they enter your classroom, you have to make sure that both students experience the same learning experience. Okay? Do not give uh, discriminating activities to both ends or do not even tend to identify which of your students are rich and which of your students are, uh, are, are poor okay? because you have to uh, be uh, fair when it comes to socioeconomic. But of course, if the student is from a not well of family and he or she needs help as teachers, we are also second parents and we need to help them. We are, after all, their second parents. So whether it be a rich student or a poor student or an average student, we are encouraged to help them on our ways. Hindi naman sa panghihimasok sa buhay ng mga sujante. And then the next one is religious background. Um, Philippines has a lot of religion. Of course, be careful and be sensitive with the discussions that you as teachers, example teachers, you as a teacher, you also have a certain system of belief. You have your religion and faith. Make sure that it does not entirely affect the things of the uh, the, the lecture. Okay, so if it's a lecture proper, you discuss as what is required in the curriculum. Okay, so that's uh, one that you should consider as well because um, there's a possibility, there are tendencies wherein there are students who are actually not uh, comfortable with the idea on, on uh, unless it is a religion class rather. Next is the learner's disabilities, gifted, and talent. So as teachers, uh, we have special education courses, subjects, and we must learn how to identify which learner is, could, can be diagnosed as, as uh, disabled or gifted or talented students. No? And, but then again, teachers do not diagnose. Uh, those, uh, there are right people who can say that the student ay may di, ay, may may ganitong case tong batang to may ganitong case tapos ikakalat mo sa faculty room that's not actually encourage teachers be careful sa mga sasabihin natin because there are right people who can actually say about the diagnosis of a child okay although we were able to learn from it but we cannot technically label them as that because there are again right people who can um, label that. But we teachers can make recommendations, but let's not label our students of such without valid diagnosis. Okay, so we must also consider them um, if a learner, if you have a learner that has special needs in your regular class, you also have to make arrangements about that. Because as teachers, again, um, a good curriculum must be responsive. It must be flexible to different learners. So, dapat, ayun yung address mo. Next is learners understand uh, under challenging circumstances include geographic isolation, disaster, child abuse, and child labor. So, there are also cases where, in example, if there's a, uh, a typhoon, please, teachers, be sensitive if the student was affected by flood. Okay, please consider them because that is very, very, um, that, that, that's the idea of teaching it. Teaching is actually focuses on the 
heart apart from the from the intellect is also teaching them to be uh, to have compassion on your fellow ano so please consider students who have um, affected by uh, flood or typhoon and uh, students who are also experiencing child abuse at their homes uh, baka mamaya pinapagalitan mo sa school and then naabuso din siya sa bahay uh, please be careful on the words that you say to our children to our students and then also those students who are working child labor um, these are special cases that as teachers we must learn how to address and know how to address in our classrooms okay because sometimes most of the times or many times the school tends to be the place where the students feel they are free and at some point we must make them feel that the the school is a free zone for them so this is from the uh, perspective on the focus on culture and indigenous people so first is the curriculum design curriculum competencies and content so it must be aligned with the geographic or with the location or with the culture of the indigenous peoples group. Um, let's try to contextualize it because a good curriculum must also be contextualized in the localities. So if you're going to design a curriculum, say for example of a certain region, make sure that it can be responded. Mal uh, gumagawa ka ng module about fishing, or gumagawa ka ng book about fishing or curriculum about fishing, but the indigenous people's group that you are going to administer is a group wherein they specialize in farming. So be careful doon. As teachers, you must consider that. Teaching methods and strategies. Uh, there are, of course, different met teaching methods and strategies, but there's no te perfect teaching method or te perfect strategy, but there is an appropriate one for every subject. Learning space and environment, please take note of that also. Learning resources, as I have mentioned kanina, if here in Metro Manila, we can give a lot of activities that are accessible on the internet, pero may mga students pa rin na hindi nakaka-cope up dito because of, of course, considering socioeconomic backgrounds. But in terms of cultural, no, learning resources uh, sa indigenous peoples group, um, you cannot demand too much from them because of the situation and of course the learning resources must also be rooted on their culture as well because especially in the philippines we have a lot of culture we want to enrich that because that is our identity as filipinos we do not want to destroy them we, could, we do not want to distort them with the culture of kasi tayo sa metro manila or in the cities we are already engaged in various cultures we are already trying to enter the principalities or concepts of uh, global citizenship but the people in the indigenous peoples are the people that still holds on their identity so do not crush that but we are still opening and offering offering uh, opportunities for them to take a look at the global citizenship but then again please ha, do not force them because the concept of development in our mind could be a different concept of development in their mind. And there are a lot of indigenous peoples group who actually emphasize that your concept of development is different from our concept of development. Example, the establishment of a certain dam here in the Philippines, which is against um, ilang, uh, indigenous, Philippine, indigenous peoples group because that land is an ancestral domain for them and they don't see it as a development for them but there are a lot but there are people who are saying that this is development for you this would generate a lot of energy which is a little bit of true but that's not the concept of development by these people so please be careful okay and the next one is classroom assessments please be careful then uh, sa assessments na ibibigay natin. Again, it must be aligned with the curriculum design and curriculum competencies and the contents. You do not give an assessment that is not related. Okay. 
And these are the focuses on culture, indigenous people, and in general, on the learner's focus. You must first uh, consider the genders, the needs of the students, the interests. Uh, there are students, there, there, there is a principle in uh, psychology of learners that there is a different types of learning and different types of learners, uh, but we do not limit them. Example, uh, this student is a visual learner and then this student is a kinesthetic learner. Hindi, hindi naman ibig sabihin na visual learner siya, hindi na siya magkikinesthetic. Ibig sabihin nun, he specializes on visual learning but he or she must still engage in a kinesthetic activities because again, the curriculum in, 20, in the 21st century is a holistic. We want to produce a learner that has 21st century skills. Okay, so focus on needs, interests, experiences. Uh, of course, different learners have different experiences. Consider that languages do not play with the words, do not play with accents or dictions of your students okay? because it, it can really affect them. And then race, Philippines is a melting pot of culture we have but then again we're still we're, we are filipinos right we're the filipino race and if you if you are a teacher a pre-service teacher who's planning to teach abroad um also take note that we are one race we are human race so do not discriminate any race next is the culture as i have mentioned melting pot of culture means and Sa loob ng classroom, iba-ibang kultura yan. Minsan may foreigner pa. Please be careful about your statements. And think as a teacher, as a global citizen, that you are considering a lot of people. And then religion, please be careful then. Baka mamaya you are already uh, misquoting or damaging a certain, uh, certain system of belief. Socioeconomic uh, background, please, teachers... Um, Make the students feel that the school or inside your classroom is they'd feel comfort, they'd feel happy, they'd feel uh, peace. You know? They won't be labeled as mahirap, they won't be labeled as mayaman sa loob ng paaralan mo because that is where education can be seen as equalizer income in times of socioeconomic backgrounds. Indigenous peoples, please take note if you have an IP student. Uh, no need to highlight them. Just ask them if, if they are. And then uh, there are also some certain things that you should consider if you are teaching them uh, culturally. Uh, but sometimes uh, there is a relationship between IP, culture, and then language and religion. Special needs, again, do not diagnose teachers. We are not license to diagnose any students or label them of such special cases but we can recommend that's what we can do as teachers challenges consider that also the strengths and weaknesses of the students and of course we want to give opportunities to our learners so that's the focus of the episode three the learner's diversity considering the learner's focus. And these are the learner's focus that you can see on the screen. And we want to highlight each and every uh, subtopics. But across your learning in professional education courses, you should, have, uh, you should have come across on the specific details on uh, focus on the learners. After all, again, 21st century learning, our center is the learners or are the learners okay so that would be all for the episode three thank you and god bless